In this video, let's look at the major themes in the poems so we can start making connections among these 20 poems. Understanding each poem individually is the first step, and you can watch my analysis videos on each poem for that. But after understanding the poems individually, we need to be able to make connections among them, because we'll have to write an essay that compares two poems. In a part 2 to this video, I look at the major devices in the poems. Just a disclaimer, there is no way I can list every single possible theme or make every single possible connection in this video. I'll cover the most important ones. I've singled out 20 themes that I want to explore. 20 themes for 20 poems. By the way, this video will not be going into in-depth analyses of any of the poems. I have created an entire analysis video for each poem, so check those out if you want to gain a better understanding of the poems individually. Sorry to interrupt your viewing experience. This is Future Adam coming in with an important notice. Since posting this video, three new poems have been added to the syllabus. I've updated the video to include those three poems as well as to remove the old ones. The old poems will be crossed out wherever they were mentioned. You'll be hearing Future Adam's voice a few times throughout this video. Okay, that's all for now. Let's get to the first theme, nature. This is one of those themes that you can find in many of the poems. First, I list the poems that explore this theme in a significant way, and then I'll very briefly discuss how the theme of nature is explored in each poem. This is how I'll proceed with all 20 themes. So the poems for nature. An African thunderstorm, sonnet composed upon Westminster Bridge, God's grandeur, orchids, this is the dark time, my love, and South. Also, a lesson for this Sunday, and landscape painter Jamaica. In An African Thunderstorm, nature takes the form of a vicious thunderstorm that wrecks an African village. We see the clouds and the wind, which develop into a terrible storm. We see the sub-theme of man versus nature, as the people in the village struggle to withstand the storm. If you've watched my analysis video of the poem, which I'm assuming you have, you will know that the storm is likely a symbol that represents colonialism. So in this poem, nature is painted to be wicked and powerful, and is used to bring out the more important theme of colonialism in respect to the African people. In Sonnet Composed Upon Westminster Bridge, we again have man versus nature. The speaker stands on a bridge at dawn and marvels at the beauty of nature. But there isn't just nature there. There are man-made things that make up the city of London. You can see the poem as exploring the conflict between the natural and the man-made, but you can also see it as exploring the unity, the teamwork, between the natural and man-made worlds. In This Is The Dark Time, My Love, the main themes are war, suffering, oppression, and patriotism. But nature plays an important role as well. Throughout the poem, we see that nature reflects the suffering and oppression of the Guyanese people. Nature in various forms serves as a symbol throughout the poem. We have the flowers bending their heads, then the sun hiding behind the clouds, and the slender grass being trampled upon. In South, we get lots and lots of natural imagery. We see a speaker who is from the Caribbean, but who has moved to a different country to live and work. Finally, he is returning home to the Caribbean. The speaker reflects deeply on the natural beauty of the Caribbean. The Caribbean beauty goes hand in hand with the vibrance and friendliness of the Caribbean people. A Lesson for this Sunday explores man's cruelty to nature through the anecdote of the children and the butterfly. We see that even from childhood, humans take advantage of nature, exploiting it for our own amusement. The poem, however, also shows us that in contrast, nature is kind toward us. This is especially evident in the first stanza. Landscape painter Jamaica goes into the art of nature and the nature of art. The artist attempts to capture, to immortalize, to embed greater meaning into a particular piece of nature, the Blue Mountains, by creating a landscape painting of it. To create the perfect portrait, the painter, his tools, and the environment must all unite. The artist gets as close to nature as he can, ending up on a precarious mountain track where he can not only clearly see, but clearly feel and even become a part of the landscape. Also, the tools become a part of nature. 
as the paintbrush, the paint, the palette are all transformed into natural elements. In the poem, we see that nature is so vast, powerful and expressive that capturing it in a landscape painting proves very difficult. Theme 2. Places West Indies, USA, South, Test Match, Sabina Park, Sonnet composed upon Westminster Bridge, theme for English B. Also, landscape painted Jamaica. Quite a few of the poems put quite a bit of emphasis on various places. In West Indies, USA, the whole point of the poem is the comparison of two places, the USA and the West Indies. Several Caribbean islands are named in the poem. Of critical importance is Puerto Rico, which is a place that seems to be caught between the USA and the West Indies. There is the perception that Puerto Rico is better off than the other Caribbean islands, being affiliated with the US. However, the poem goes into how this perception does not coincide with reality. In the poem, the financial situations, the cultures, as well as the nature of several places are explored. A similar poem is South wherein the Caribbean, or the West Indies, is compared to the North, which might be the big first world countries of the US, England, Canada, and other places in Europe. Throughout the poem, we're taken on a journey through places. We start in the Caribbean with the bright blue beaches. Then we journey up north and reach the saltless cities and countless savannas. Finally, we return home to the Caribbean. The places in the poem actually represent the people of those places, as you'd have seen from the lesson on the South. Yet another poem that draws comparisons between the West Indies and elsewhere is Test Match Sabina Park. In this poem, an Englishman is a spectator at a cricket match that takes place at Sabina Park, which is in Kingston, Jamaica. In this poem, Sabina Park represents the West Indies on a whole. In Sonnet Composed Upon Westminster Bridge, the speaker is in a specific place, London. This place showcases a meeting point of nature and infrastructure, the God-made world and the man-made world. The poem also looks at several specific places within the city of London, like towers, theatres and temples. In the poem, all of those places somehow represent different aspects of human life and culture. Also, these places, in their own way, interact with nature and show us the relationship between nature and infrastructure, the God-made world and the man-made world. The place landscape painted Jamaica is centered on is the Blue Mountain Peak, and more generally the Blue Mountains. The mountains are described as an important place, even said to be dignified. The importance of this place might be what leads the artist to attempt a landscape painting of it. Also, it could be the great significance of the mountains that makes creating such a painting difficult for the artist. He must do his best to do this great landscape justice by capturing its intricacies as well as exhibiting the vitality and spirit that dwells within it. Next theme, cultures. Here we have West Indies, USA, South, Test Match, Sabina Park, Once Upon a Time, theme for English B. In West Indies, USA, many comparisons are made between the West Indies and the US, including the cultures of these two places. Cultures and cultural identities are important themes in this poem. South is quite similar in this way. We see the culture and lifestyle of the northern people compared to those of the Caribbean people. Again, Test Match Savannah Park is lumped in with these two poems as all three of them look at the West Indian culture in comparison to other cultures. In this case, it is West Indies versus England. In Once Upon a Time, we get to see the culture not of a particular place, but of the whole world basically. Specifically, we are seeing the culture of present day. Nowadays, people tend to be deceptive, fake, superficial. We lie all the time, and that kind of behavior is a norm that we can't seem to defy. The speaker of the poem struggles with the conflict of trying to become genuine and honest. Identity Once upon a time, 
South, West Indies, USA, Test Match Sabina Park, Bird Shooting Season, Theme for English B, Dreaming Black Boy, My Parents, Old Haig, Mirror. Here I've listed half of the CSET poems. These 10 feature the theme in at least one important way. In Once Upon a Time, the speaker is trying to be himself, trying to live an honest and genuine life. He doesn't want to live a lie. He's trying to embrace and represent his true identity, his true self, his true feelings. But he struggles to be authentic in a world like this, where fakeness is the order of the day. In South, West Indies, USA and the Test Match Sabina Park, we're dealing not with individual identities, but with cultural, national, and regional identities. These three poems take different angles as they explore who we are as West Indians. In all three poems, the West Indian identity is juxtaposed with other identities. In these poems, race and country are extremely important in the understanding of identity. In Bird Shooting Season, identity is explored through the lens of gender. What does it mean to be a man, to be a woman? Men are hunters and gatherers, while women stay in the kitchen, right? We also see how the children in the poem see their identities as roles they must grow into, shoes to be filled. The boys in the poem will one day become men and will one day hunt birds, while the girls will eventually become women. The women in the poem are apparently trapped in this gender role in this limited and predefined identity. Theme for English B and Dreaming Black Boy look at the racial side of things. In Dreaming Black Boy, the speaker is trapped in his blackness. He's unable to be himself and live a comfortable life because his skin color has already determined the path of his life, the difficulties he must face. In both poems, the speaker's identities lead to social isolation as well as oppression, especially in Dreaming Black Boy. In My Parents, the speaker, a child, or an adult remembering his childhood days, longs to play with and be accepted by the rough street kids. His parents are overprotective and have determined that he is better than those ruffians. His identity is different from theirs, but the speaker does not want to be different. He wants to share the identity of the other children. Because of the difference between the speaker and the other children, he feels isolated from them and feels lonely. Both Old Haig and Mirror deal with miserable old women who are trying to recover their youth and be accepted. In Mirror, the speaker is frustrated because she is growing older and less beautiful. She becomes obsessed with her looks and begins to search for her identity in her physical appearance. The titular mirror is a symbol that represents the woman's perspective on identity. She's looking into the mirror to find who she really is. But as we all should know, we are much more than what we look like. In the poem, the speaker struggles to accept herself, to accept the fact that she's getting older. The old hike, on the other hand, wants to be accepted by society. This is the poem that most powerfully explores identity. Here, the Haig is written to be a woman who can't help but do seemingly evil things. She drinks the blood of babies, but she's not actually proud of that. She wants to be normal, to be accepted, but she cannot escape her own identity, her own desires, her own needs. She is compelled to drink the blood of babies so she can remain alive. She feeds her own life force from the baby's blood. The Haig, because of her identity, is an outcast, hated by the very mothers who actually take advantage of her. The poem makes us wonder whether we can actually change our identities at will. Are we stuck in our identities or can we make a change? Race. Test match Sabina Park, West Indies, USA, South. Theme for English B, Dreaming Black Boy. This is another major theme that runs through several poems. In South, West Indies, USA and Test Match Sabina Park, we see that black people are treated unfairly or looked down on because of their race. We tackle racism and race relations in these poems. Not everything that happens in the poems relate to racism and that's why I use the term race relations. If you haven't already, watch the lessons on these poems to understand what I'm saying. 
Test match Savannah Park is quite different from West Indies, USA and South because here the expected prejudice against black people is completely reversed. The white man walks into Sabina Park feeling like he's better than the West Indians. But seeing how the West Indian cricket team completely dominates the English side, it's as if all of a sudden the whiteness is now inferior to the blacks. However, remember that this poem is as much about culture and the nationalism as it is about race. Theme for English B and the Dreaming Black Boy are the main race poems on the syllabus. We've mentioned them quite a bit, so I won't say much else. In short, they both explore how blackness actually limits the potential of the speakers and causes them pain and isolation. Theme 6. Power and Powerlessness Dreaming Black Boy Theme for English B This is the dark time, my love A stone's throw Bird shooting season Little boy crying The woman speaks to the man who has employed her son in several of the poems, we see how personae are powerless. They are helpless. They can't change their situation. They're stuck. We also see how others have power over them. We've already talked too much about Dreaming Black Boy and Theme for English B. We see how the speaker's race ties into their powerlessness. In This Is The Dark Time My Love, the speaker and his entire country, presumably Guyana, seem to be powerless under the fists of their invaders, the oppressors, presumably the British. Even nature seems to be powerless in the face of these armored villains. The power dynamic comes in the form of imperialism, which refers to one country exerting dominance over another. In a stone's throw and bird shooting season, the women are powerless. They are overpowered by the men. This is much more pronounced in a stone's throw, where the men exert sexual, physical, and even moral dominance over the woman. In the end, even when the woman is empowered by the Guru, presumably Jesus, it is a man who gives her power. In Little Boy Crying, we see the world from the perspective of a toddler. He feels powerless, as obviously he cannot overpower his father. His father shows him tough love, as lessons must be learned. The little boy sees this tough love as villainy and fantasizes about killing his father. Is this really how three-year-olds think? In The Woman Speaks to the Man Who Has Employed Her Son, God, I hate saying that title. The woman in the poem is powerless because her son has chosen a life of crime. Her son idolizes and works for a gangster. And though she loves her son, she can't do anything about it. Next theme, Hopes and Desires. Once Upon a Time, Orchids, Theme for English B, Dreaming Black Boy, My Parents, This is the Dark Time I Love, Mirror, It is the Constant Image of Your Face. This is another common theme amongst the poems. In Once Upon a Time, the speaker hopes to become more honest, truer to himself more courageous in expressing his feelings and being himself. We already know well that in Dreaming Black Boy and Theme for English B, the speakers desire to overcome, to eradicate the limitations and barriers of their race. They want to live equally and freely amongst everyone else. In My Parents, the speaker desires to be accepted by the other children. He wants to distance himself from the identity his parents have given him. He doesn't want to be posh and different because that causes him to be teased and isolated. In This Is The Dark Time My Love, the speaker expresses a desire to survive this turbulent time. He wants his country to overcome this dark time and get back to brighter days. In Mirror, the speaker desires to regain her youth she wants to be young and beautiful. This, she believes, would make her accept herself. It is the constant image of her face is a poem about a man who is torn between two countries. He loves his home country, but he also loves another country. He desires to please both countries without betraying or offending either of them. Next, oppression. An African Thunderstorm, West Indies, USA, South, This Is The Dark Time, My Love, Theme for English B, Dreaming Black Boy, 
bird shooting season a stone's throw. The length of this list shows how depressing the seasick poems are. We've already discussed how the black people are oppressed in an African thunderstorm, West Indies, USA, South, and this is the dark time I love. We have also seen the racial oppression spoken of in Theme for English B and Dreaming Black Boy. We have also seen how the women are oppressed in bird shooting season and a stone's throw. Moving on, war and crime. The woman speaks to the man who has employed her son. An African thunderstorm. Dulce et decorumist. This is the dark time, my love. In The Woman Speaks to the Man Who Has Employed Her Son, crime, particularly gun crime, is a central theme. The woman in the poem perhaps represents all the mothers who feel helpless and hopeless as their sons are consumed by the streets. The son, perhaps as his way of finding a better life and providing for his family, becomes a hired gun. The mother prepares herself for what she knows is an inevitable end for her son which is an early and tragic death. While colonialism and imperialism are perhaps the main themes in An African Thunderstorm, there is also a lot of language that imply that a war is also happening. Perhaps we are seeing an invasion or perhaps a rebellion. In the last stanza especially, we get that feeling that there is a lot of violent tension between the African people and their oppressors. Dulce et Decorumest is the most brutal war poem ever written, and certainly the most graphic poem on the syllabus. The poem is saying, in a nutshell, that even though many people consider war to be this cool, glorious, patriotic thing, it is really savage, brutal, inhumane, and pointless. The speaker takes us through a traumatic battlefield experience where he watches one of his comrades die a horrible death. War is certainly the most dominant theme in this poem. While This Is The Dark Time I Love certainly has war in it, we are seeing less of the war itself and more of its effect on the people. We see the invading soldiers. They are well armed and dangerous, and they are said to be the man of death. From here on, we'll be able to go through the themes very quickly. That's because while discussing the themes we've discussed so far, we've also touched on some of the themes to come. Theme 10, Suffering and Sadness. An African Thunderstorm, West Indies, USA, South. This is the dark time, my love. Dulce et decoramist. Theme for English B, Dreaming Black Boy, Bird Shooting Season, My Parents, Mirror. Also, a lesson for this Sunday. We've actually already covered how the speakers in these poems endure sadness and suffering. Depending on the poem, the suffering can arise from oppression, prejudice, war, or in the case of My Parents, the speaker's social isolation, or in the case of Mirror, the refusal to accept reality and accept oneself. In a lesson for this Sunday, nature suffers throughout the poem. In stanza 1, it is implied that nature feels underappreciated and unacknowledged by man. This is why it feels the need to request praise. Following that, we see the butterfly suffering at the hands of the little girl. Then the frocks of summer are said to be torn. Finally, the grass is said to sway to the scythe's design. Nature continually suffers at the cruelty and thoughtlessness of man. This realization strikes the speaker with fear and sorrow. Next theme, patriotism and nationalism. It is the dark time, my love. Dulce et decorumist. It is the constant image of your face. Test match Sabina Park. Now we are talking about love for and pride in one's home country, and in some cases, home region. In It Is The Dark Time I Love, we see that the speaker displays his love for country as he laments over the dark time. He is trying to make his fellow men realize the gravity of the situation, perhaps so that they can become more militant. I don't think the speaker in the poem is hopeless. I think he's really trying to encourage his countrymen to smell the coffee and stand up and fight. In Dulce et Decoramist, 
The speaker is challenging what is often seen as the pinnacle of patriotism. Who is more patriotic than a soldier who dies for his country? The speaker hates this ideology, having seen the reality, the tragedy, the insanity of war. In It is the constant image of your face, the speaker loves not one but two countries. He wants to remain loyal to the country of his birth and also to the country in which he has found refuge. His internal conflict is that even though he wants to love both countries equally, he knows that in order for him to love one, he must betray the other. This is a reality he can't seem to accept. We see in South that the speaker, even though he made the decision to move from the Caribbean to the North, really misses and loves his homeland. We can hear the joy and pride in his voice as he returns home after having lived abroad. In Test Match Sabina Park, the Jamaican speaker, as well as the other West Indian spectators, are extremely proud of where they are from. The West Indian cricket team is making them proud. On the flip side, we see that the Englishman, though he was initially very proud to be white and English, becomes ashamed of his whiteness and his place of origin, seeing how poorly the English cricket team plays. Next theme, Imperialism and Colonialism. We have an African thunderstorm, West Indies, USA, South, this is the dark time, my love. Now we are talking about one country invading and exploiting another. This theme is the bread and butter of an African thunderstorm. We see that the thunderstorm represents the colonial forces that ravaged many African countries. We see something similar in This is the Dark Time, My Love, where Guyana is being oppressed by the British. In South and West Indies, USA, the imperialism and colonialism are a little less direct, as these poems are not set in colonial times, but in more recent times. However, we can still clearly see these themes running through these two poems. Next, Religion and God. The woman speaks to the man who has employed her son, a stone's throw, God's grandeur. Also, a lesson for this Sunday, and the death be not proud. In The Woman Speaks to the Man Who Has Employed Her Son, the son's mother, as she realizes that she has no control over the path her son is taking, desperately turns to God. There are also lots of examples of biblical allusion in this poem. The woman's spirituality comes out not at the beginning of the poem, but nearing the end, when she feels hopeless and anxious about the path her son is taking. In this way, her connection to God, her priors, her spirituality, somewhat represent her powerlessness. Because she can't help or change her son, she turns to God in desperation. A Stone's Throw is actually a retelling of a biblical account, that of the prostitute who was about to be stoned to death. In the poem, we see a mob of men surround a woman. They seem to be religious men, righteous men. But is this what righteous men do? They are using religion as a weapon against this woman, as a means to justify their own cruelty and perversion. A lesson for this Sunday is littered with references to Christianity. The speaker himself seems to be quite religious, mentioning that the children break his Sabbath with the thought of sin. The poem perhaps indicates that by being cruel to nature, we are affronting God, and that becoming more religious might be a step toward eradicating this toxic element of human nature. In Death Be Not Proud, the basis of the speaker's argument against death is the eternal life promised by God. Because the speaker looks forward to eternal life, impending death is seen as nothing to fear, as it doesn't actually mark the end of life, but the beginning. The comparison of sleep to death, the mention of the promise of eternal life after death, and the conclusion that death will die are all references to Christian ideologies. Other religions have these ideologies as well, but considering the background of the poet, it is safe to say that the influence for these ideologies were from his Christian beliefs. Next we go to poverty. West Indies, USA, the woman speaks to the man who has employed her son, my parents. In West Indies, USA, vivid images and clever similes are used to depict the vast difference in wealth and development 
between Puerto Rico and the other West Indian islands. From the handwritten signs in Haiti to the sleazy tourist art in Trinidad and Tobago, the speaker describes the Caribbean countries as not being up to scratch. In contrast, Puerto Rico, apparently due to its affiliation with the US, seems to be well off. However, as we get a closer look at what is really happening in Puerto Rico, we see that this isn't the paradise it first appears to be. Within the country is a steep divide. While some people can enjoy wealth and luxury, we see that many people there are poor. In The Woman Speaks to the Man Who Has Employed Her Son, we get the impression that the woman and her son come from humble beginnings. This might have been one of the factors that pushed the son to start a life of crime. In my parents, there is the stark contrast between the speaker, who is well off, and the street children, who are dirt poor. However, the poverty in this poem does not take on the same negative connotation, but instead seems to be connected to a kind of freedom and wildness that the speaker longs to experience himself. Next theme, death. The woman speaks to the man who has employed her son. Dolce et decorum est. This is the dark time, my love. All hike. Also, of course, death be not proud. Death is a very important theme in The Woman Speaks to the Man Who Has Employed Her Son. We see the speaker, the son's mother, preparing herself to face her son's death, almost as if he's already dead and ready to be buried. This shows that she's convinced that a life of crime will undoubtedly lead to an early grave. Several biblical allusions in the poem also deal with death. Also, I wonder how many people this woman's son has already killed, seeing that he is probably a gunman. Surprisingly, I wouldn't say that death is a central theme in Dolce et Decorum Est, even though a terrible death happens at the center of the poem. However, it is definitely worth mentioning. The death detailed in the poem is used to prove a point, to draw our attention to the fact that war is not great and glorious. It is not a poem about death, but a poem about the reality of war. Death is only one of the tragedies that war brings. It also brings trauma. It brings disfigurement. It steals the youth and the joy and soul of men, even when they do not physically die. In This is the Dark Time, My Love, we see that the invading soldiers bring with them not just suffering and destruction, but also death. Not only is there the literal death of the people who the soldiers kill, but we see that the country itself is being killed, being robbed of its bright future by the invaders. In all Haig, babies are the ones dying. The Haig drinks their blood to maintain her own life. The Haig fears death and commits the evil act of killing babies to stay alive. But as you'd have seen in the analysis video, it's actually much more complicated than that. Death is the most obvious theme in Death Be Not Proud. The speaker confronts death as if it were a person. The aim of his argument is to convince death to be humble and to expose to the reader the reality that death cannot harm us but can only grant us rest and passage into the afterlife. We should therefore embrace instead of fear death. As much as the speaker is arguing to convince both death and the reader, the argument might stem from his own need to accept death. He might also be trying to convince himself that death is nothing to fear. Next, gender. Bird shooting season, the woman speaks to the man who has employed her son, a stone's throw. In bird shooting season, we see clear gender roles as both the men and women prepare for the bird shooting that is to happen the following morning. The men prepare the guns and drink rum while the women toil away in the kitchen for many hours. The poem looks at what it means to be a man and what it means to be a woman. It also shows us that the women are discontent with the role they are assigned. They feel as if they are not treated fairly, perhaps. Again, this is an oversimplification of the matter. The real juice can be found in the analysis video of the poem. In The Woman Speaks to the Man Who Has Employed Her Son, the mother is powerless to get her son on the right track. You know who has power in the poem? The man who has employed her son. Also, the woman's son has power over her, as he has the ability to walk away 
from a life of crime. Because he refuses to walk away, he causes his mother immense pain. While it isn't directly stated, the poem does suggest that some of the woman's powerlessness stems from the fact that she's a woman. Another gender poem on the syllabus is A Stone's Throw, where we see not just prejudice against women, but straight up abuse of a woman. In fact, we're talking gang banging and murder here. The men in the poem judge the woman so harshly for committing a sin that no doubt many of them have also committed. In this poem, the men have all the power, while the woman is at their mercy. Next, childhood experiences. Little boy crying, once upon a time, bird shooting season, my parents. No other poem deals as deeply with childhood experiences as little boy crying, except maybe my parents. In this poem, the persona reminisces on something that happened when he was three years old. His father disciplined him because he was playing in the rain. We don't know if the father beat or abused him, but we are sure that there was at least one slap involved. We see how parents and children have very different understandings of a moment of punishment. The father really loves his son and regrets having to slap him, but insists that his son must learn not to play in the rain. The son, on the other hand, in that moment hates his father for punishing him. My Parents is another poem that is built on the theme of childhood experiences. We see that the speaker resents his parents for having kept him away from the other children. He wishes he could have enjoyed a more liberal, more exciting childhood. But because his parents are overprotective or snobby, he ended up being isolated from the other children. In Once Upon a Time, even though there are a father and a child mentioned, I wouldn't say that childhood experiences is a major theme. But there are two reasons why I have this poem on this list. For one, the speaker is talking to his son and wants to learn how to live with the same childlike honesty that this son has. Looking at the poem from the son's perspective, we can see that this is his, the son's, childhood experience. The second thing is that the father talks about a long time ago when he used to be able to live a more honest life, when it seemed that everyone lived a more honest life. The father might be remembering his own childhood when he himself was too naive to realize the true state of the world. Just like Once Upon a Time, childhood experiences might not be a super critical theme in bird shooting season, but it's still worth mentioning. The main reason is that the speaker of the poem is probably a child. The child is seeing how the adults around them prepare for bird hunting, bird shooting season. They are seeing the gender roles play out and can anticipate growing up and perpetuating those same roles. Next we have love. The woman speaks to the man who has employed her son. It is the constant image of her face. This is the dark time I love. Little boy crying. My parents. In The Woman Speaks to the Man Who Has Employed Her Son, the mother loves her son dearly, and this makes seeing him choose the path of the gun heartbreaking for her. We've already mentioned the speaker's love conflict in It is the Constant Image of Your Face. Note that some people interpret the poem to be about a man who is torn between a woman and a country, whereas I see the poem as a man being torn between two countries. Either way, love is a central theme here. This is the dark time I love, just like it is the constant image of your face, is about love for country. However, just like with the previous poem, some people think that the my love in the title and opening line is referring to a woman and not a country. In that case, the speaker could be telling perhaps his wife or lover about this dark time of suffering and death that has come upon the country. In both Little Boy Crying and My Parents, we see how a parent's love can be misinterpreted by a child, or can actually be misguided by the parents themselves. In My Parents, the speaker's parents try to protect him, but end up pulling him away from the life he really wanted. In Little Boy Crying, the father loves his son, but must punish him to teach him a lesson. The son interprets this as the father being wicked toward him. Next theme, Parenthood.
Once upon a time, the woman speaks to the man who has employed her son. Little boy crying, my parents. We've already talked enough about how parenthood comes out in these four poems. Each poem shows some of the struggles and complexities that parents have to deal with. Finally, hypocrisy and appearance versus reality. We have West Indies, USA, A Stone's Throw, Dolce et Decorumest, Old Haig, Little Boy Crying, Once Upon a Time, Mirror. Also, Death Be Not Proud. In these poems, things are not as they appear to be. We see in West Indies, USA that even though Puerto Rico looks like paradise, and although so many Caribbean people dream of living there, that that country has their own demons to fight. Not everyone there is living the good life. In a stone's throw, the men who are about to rape and kill this prostitute are hypocrites. Not only have some of them probably slept with her, making them guilty of adultery as well, but isn't it hypocritical to abuse and even kill someone because they sinned when abusing and killing is also sinful? Also, these men pretend to be holy, but really, they're quite the opposite. In Dulce et Decoramest, we see that even though war is said to be glorious and honorable, it is shameful, disgusting, and inhumane. There is nothing sweet or fitting about it. In Old Haig, even though the Old Haig seems to be the monster, we see that the mothers in the poem, who are pretending to be the victims, are even more monstrous than the Haig herself. Make sure to watch my lesson on that poem for more details. In Little Boy Crying, we see that even though it appears to the son that his father is wicked, we know that his father actually loves him and is just trying to teach him a lesson. In Once Upon a Time, we see that the entire world is fake. Everyone is just pretending. We act polite and try to please everyone, but the behaviors that people portray do not match their true feelings. In Mirror, the speaker tries her best to deny the reality that she is getting older. She turns to the mirror, wanting it to validate the lie that she has told herself. But the mirror only tells the truth. The mirror shows her that indeed she is aging. In Death Be Not Proud, Death thinks it is powerful. Its pride stems from its thought that it can overthrow men. It also feels proud because people fear it. However, the speaker argues that man has power over death and that death is actually powerless to hurt man, able only to bring rest and deliver us into the afterlife. And there we have it, 20 important themes and where to find them. Now you should be able to make thematic connections among the poems. In the next video, we'll talk devices. See you soon.